volunteer opportunities listed for uh, getting involved with the wider group of Lutherans in the area. Uh, if you are interested in any of them, please come talk to me. Um, we'd love to have you uh, get involved with those opportunities as you're able. Um, we've got a winter storm watch going on tonight through tomorrow morning, I think. Um, if we get snow, you know the drill. If North Syracuse schools are closed, there will be no Bible study tomorrow. If they're delayed, um, I'll probably be calling folks that come to the Bible study and see what you want to do. Um, and of course, we might not get anything. We might just get some more rain. So uh, keep your eye on the weather. Keep your eye on what North Syracuse schools are doing. And we'll see about Bible study tomorrow morning. All right. If no one has anything else, then let us rise for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, Holy God we, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things, and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Disobedient. 
All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, said, Out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may be but boast. For we are what, we, what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Jesus said these words, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Praise you, all Christ. You may be seated. It was the summer of 2011. I had just finished my internship and had moved back to the seminary campus before fall classes started for my final year. I was working on my approval essay. That's the big paper that I had to write for my candidacy committee showing what I had learned over my time in seminary and on internship so that they could approve me for ordination. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Everything started shaking for a few moments, and then it stopped. Stunned, I looked around and I said to myself, I think that was an earthquake. I hadn't felt one since my time in Taiwan, which is an island formed by plates rubbing together and where earthquakes are a frequent occurrence. So I went online and confirmed that, yes, reports were coming in, that it had been an earthquake that had originated in Virginia and traveled all the way up the Appalachian Mountains so that we felt it in Gettysburg. Later, I was talking with friends of mine who were in the summer Greek class, and they said that when the earthquake happened, they had just been learning the word cosmos, which is the Greek word that we translate in today's reading as world. The world had been shaken just as they were learning the word for world, which seemed to be very fitting. I was also told that the professor remarked that he felt a Carol King song coming on. That's a story for another day. Our gospel reading today is very familiar to us, so familiar, in fact, that we might think we can't squeeze anything out new about it. Verse 16, it gets flashed up at sports events a lot in an effort to somehow evangelize to people who might be watching the game, but who might not otherwise think of coming to church. 
Now we can debate if those efforts are really worth it or if they might ever bear fruit. But what does it mean when we say that God so loved the world or the cosmos? Well, let's start by reminding ourselves of the story that the scripture comes from. Earlier in chapter 3, we have Nicodemus, a Pharisee, who comes to Jesus in the nighttime and starts asking him questions. They get into a conversation that includes Nicodemus acknowledging that Jesus has come from God and Jesus answering in riddles that include the line of being born from above. Jesus speaks about the spirit blowing where it pleases and people who are born of the spirit. And Nicodemus asks how these things can be. And then Jesus launches into a monologue that includes the portion of the gospel that we have before us today. He makes reference to the numbers story that we heard as the first reading today. That's an odd little story of the snake on a stick. And Jesus says that he will be lifted up just like that snake on the stick was, and people will look to him and live. So now we find our way back to cosmos. English has stolen this word from Greek, and when we use it, we generally use cosmos to refer to the entire universe, the outer limits of space. But the Greek is a little more specific than that. The Greek has more of the idea of this world that we live on, but not just that little word world, but rather the orderly, beautiful world that God made. It's supposed to remind us of the creation stories in Genesis, of how God brought order out of the formlessness and chaos that was there before God started creating. And with such a reminder, this little word cosmos in this portion of John is supposed to tell us that God not only loves the human beings that God created, but also that God loves every part of creation from the beautiful lush mountains to the arid deserts, from the animals that we love like horses, dogs, and cats, to the not so lovely mosquitoes, cockroaches, and mice. Yes, God loves them. God encompasses the entire cosmos, the entire world with God's love. And it is for this entire beautiful created world, not only for the human beings in it, that God sent God's son, Jesus, so that the entire world could be part of the new creation and of the eternal life that Jesus promises. And even though this verse, John 3.16, is one that we all know and that speaks beautifully of God's love for the entire world, the next sentence is just as lovely, if not as well known. For we know that God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but order that the world might be saved through him. When we look around at everything that's wrong in this world and wonder how anyone could ever love us when we've made such a mess of things, we are reassured that somehow, mysteriously, God does love us because God deems us worthy of love. And that the arrival of Jesus into the world is to save us, not to condemn us for the unworthy things that we have done. And that is wonderful good news indeed. God loves us unconditionally, forever. And because we can rest secure in God's love, we can be motivated to show that love not only to other human beings, but also to the rest of creation. So how do we do that? By learning more about the world around us, how it operates, and what we can do to help preserve it and sustain it for the generations coming after us. Now, we all know the mantra, reduce, reuse, and recycle, and I think most of us are doing the best that we can with that. So how else can we learn about the world? Well, we can learn from what the scientists are saying, and when 97% of climate scientists are saying that we human beings are causing climate change through what we're doing, then let's do them the courtesy of trusting that they know what they're talking about. 
Many of our scientists got into what they're doing out of a desire to know how this beautiful world around us works. And they're not saying what they're saying to make our lives harder or out of any kind of political agenda. They're saying what they're saying because this is where their explorations have led them. And they love this beautiful world too, and they want to see it thrive. Besides trusting the scientists, another way to love God's world is to love how nature in the wild works. When I was in Wyoming, I lived about 80 miles east of the east entrance to Yellowstone National Park. Now, every year, we would hear about tourists getting too close to the wild animals, mainly buffalo, but some others thrown in there too, and getting bored because they thought it was more like a petting zoo than nature in its rawest form. But one year when I was there, some tourists came across a bison cat that seemed to be separated from its mother. Out of a mistaken belief that the cat was in distress, they thought the kindest thing to do would be to load it up into their SUV and bring it to a park ranger. That's exactly the wrong thing to do, and I hope all of you out here know that too. <laughs> the bison cap is now friendly towards humans, and having a human scent on it, it would never have been accepted back by its mother, and the park rangers had to have it put down. Nature in its purest form can be brutal, and if the calf had in fact been separated from its mother, nature would have taken care of the problem in one way or another. The tourists who did this were fined. You know, sometimes the best way we human beings can show love to the animals and plants around us is simply to let them be, even when it goes against all of our instincts. Of course, there are other times when we can help nature out. We tend to our gardens, we prune and water the plants and harvest the fruits of our labors. We care for the trees, and when a tree dies, we take the tree down. We care for our beloved pets. We look at the wild animals that are having a difficult time because of the changing climate, and we work to offer them protection, perhaps by declaring their habitats off limits to human development, or perhaps by declaring them off limits for hunting, or perhaps by developing captive breeding programs to help increase the population. There are times when we can show God's love to the world around us by helping it out, and other times when we show God's love to the world around us by letting it be. The trick is in knowing what the best way to help nature is in any given situation. God loves the entire beautiful world that God created, including us and including the non-human world around us. We hear so much about loving our sibling human beings, and of course that is the right thing to do. But we don't often hear about the beautiful world that God made for us to be a part of. And as we reflect on how much God loves the whole cosmos, both human and non-human life, it is also appropriate for us to consider how we reflect God's love to the non-human life that we are so interconnected with. We don't always do a great job with that. But the beautiful thing is that God loves us unconditionally forever because we are God's creation. So as we go out into the beautiful world around us, we can rest secure in that love and find ways to show that love to both the humans and the non-humans around us. Amen.
whom we commemorate today. Free all people from the evils of racism, religious strife, and hatred. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, your love heals. Care tenderly for all whose loved ones perish from pandemic disease in every nation. Strengthen healthcare workers, first responders, and caregivers. Relieve all who live with chronic illness and pain. And we take a moment now to remember all who are on our hearts, either aloud or in silence. Heidi Waltz. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Incarnate God, your love enlightens. Open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings of our faith. Deepen our love for you and for one another. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, your love saves. Those who died in the faith are made alive in Christ. We give thanks for your promise that we also will be raised to newness of life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a side of peace with one another.
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
chapter. Christ given for you. The body of 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 Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Careful that fall. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Okay.
Hey Rick, how you doing? 